So with the release of AMD's six core processors, obviously there's a whole lot of motherboards to go with them. And while AMD's done a great job of making sure that you can use older motherboards with their six cores, Obviously, for the best possible updated feature set, you're going to want to use a new 800 series chipset board. So this is Gigabyte's 890GPA-UD3H. So the 890G stands for 890GX. P, I think, is a, more like a series. And then A means USB 3.0, as well as SATA 6 gigabit per second, ultra durable, and then 3H. Um, okay, so basically they've got support for all AM3 CPUs, including Phenom 2X4, Phenom 2X3, Athlon 2X4, and Phenom 2X6, all of that good stuff. You got support for Crossfire, okay? Then you also have a 4 plus 1 phase power design. They've got benchmarks on here for the onboard video, so because this is a GX chipset, it does have onboard video. Gigabyte's got a three-year warranty in US and Canada. They've got a sticker on here to tell us about that. And then there are three, three, three onboard accelerations. So USB 3.0, USB power times three. And what that means is that every USB port on a Gigabyte 333 motherboard can deliver up to three times the power. So if you're using a hub, you can plug in three full USB 3.0 powered devices without actually using a powered hub. Then it also has SATA 3.0 or six gigabit per second. And that is supported natively by AMD's latest chipset. On the back, I don't know that we've got a whole lot. They're talking about their easy energy saver a little bit, as well as the benefits of a two ounce copper PCB. So uh, lower temperature, lower impedance, lower EMI. Uh, better power efficiency, better overclocking, all that good stuff. Okay, so let's have a look at what is included with the UD3H here. First of all, we have the user's manual, which has a utility and chipset driver, etc. DVD inside. Don't use this, download the latest off the Gigabyte website. Also inside is the IO shield for whatever reason. Okay, so the manual is in all English and it's about that thick. There you go. Next, we have the Multilingual Installation Guidebook. The Installation Guidebook shows you how to install a CPU and CPU cooler, RAM, install a case and power supply. Basically, it's a little guide on how to build a PC, and it's in like 300 million different languages here. Next, we have four SATA cables, two right angle, two straight, and then one IDE cable. After that, we will find a couple of stickers, one of which is Gigabyte, and the other is Dolby Home Theater. That is it for accessories. That is a fairly bare accessory package for, um, for a board at this sort of a price point. But it looks like Gigabyte has focused more on using a higher end chipset, for one thing, and on delivering sort of the important, the important value adds, because this does not look like a value board. The first thing you'll notice about it is that it has huge cooling on both the Northbridge and on the voltage regulator modules, which are up here. So these are made of what appears to be aluminum. They've got a heat pipe connecting them here, and they look incredibly beefy for like a, a GX series or more value-oriented board. The first thing you'll notice, obviously, in the center of the board. Well, did I already say first thing? I think I did. Second thing you'll notice is this is an AM3 socket. It means you've got support for all AM3 CPUs, including the new X6 CPUs. You've got your power connectors in their ideal locations up at the top left for the 8-pin, and then over on the right-hand edge for the 24-pin. You've got support for dual channel DDR3, they're color coded, so if you have a dual channel kit you're going to install it first in the two blue modules and then if you want to add another kit you'll install it then in the two white slots, not modules. Next we've got an IDE connector and what that's still doing on a board it's very hard to say. And then uh, under that we will find some more SATA ports or some SATA ports. We have six SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports, those are the blue ones and those are running off the AMD Southbridge. And then we have two more and these are running off the gigabit chipset that's also providing IDE support. So those are SATA 2 and the blue ones are SATA 3. Okay. Then we have our front panel connectors, four USB front headers. So that means you can run up to eight USB ports off of these headers, two FireWire headers. Then you've got a floppy connector of all things. And then moving on from there, our front audio. I've never liked this location for front audio. I realize it probably makes life a little bit easier for the, uh, for the routing as far as the internal uh, wiring is going. So you got your ports here, you got your audio chipset here, you got your header here, but I really do prefer it down here because it's, 
a little bit tricky to run a connector over there from the front of some cases. Either way, it's uh, it's usually doable, so it's not that big of a deal. First of all, uh, first I keep saying first of all. I can't imagine why. Next, we have our PCI Express 16x slot followed by another PCI Express 16X slot. This one, however, you can see from the internal connectors, runs at 8X speed. So if you're running two graphics cards, they're going to run at PCIe 8X speed for both of them, which doesn't really impact performance anyway. Next, we've got three PCIe 1X slots and two PCI slots. So that means that if you've got two dual slot graphics cards, you've got access to one, two PCIe 1X and one PCI slot. Over around the back of the board, we will find all of our connectivity options here. We've got one PS2 keyboard slash mouse port. We have four USB 2.0 ports, VGA, HDMI, and then what appeared, did I say HDMI? Wow, I'm off today. DVI and HDMI, sure enough. Then we have optical audio out, Firewire, Gigabit LAN, and 7.1 audio. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the GA890 GPA UD3H.